Welcome to Quilting with Dawn, episode two. This episode, we're going to, okay, I'm going to sew 792 triangles together. It's going to be quite the adventure. Now, to, give you, to situate how it's going to work, and I'll explain a bit better the process. Now, well, it's not rocket science, it helps to have a visual. Step back here and show, ta-da! What I've done here is taken the liberty of laying out the first four rows of the pattern. The reason you see two things here is that the quilt sewn is 80 inches tall. This quilt wall, even if it were sewn, wouldn't be tall enough. And because it's unsewn, so far, uh, I needed, like you say, the first row, row starts here and then continues here. And I'll throw on the screen what part of the pattern we're talking about, but I think it's pretty obvious. You can see right away how the colors and shapes are providing that 3D effect. You, know, you really see it with the blue here, where you get the top of the box, the front left, there, the left side, and then the right side, or right facing sides. So it's pretty cool. Right. I am just about ready to start sewing <laughs> with my, well, actually Carolyn's middle of the road sewing machine. Yeah, it works great. It's called the Singer Confidence Quilter. As you notice, it's got the larger, um, plate here for, I suppose, holding the large fabrics you're going to be sewing. Now, before I actually get sewing, I thought I'd explain a little bit how I built the quilt wall. So what I did is, using this working sheet here, I, and I refer to it often, I mean all the time, I then went to all the packages of fabrics and then worked down each column. So for column one, I said, right, I need uh, 22 background fabrics in a row. Boom, and I did it. And then my, 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 my thinks that it says uh, I need uh, uh, one light blue followed by 16 dark blue followed by five more background fabrics. And so I just followed my worksheet, created this, and I did this yesterday, and all the fabric has stuck to the wall. I was, I was worried this morning I was going to get up and half the ones were going to be on the floor and I was going to, oh, I got to start again. No, it was great. Now let's get the, let the sewing begin. But... But wait, there's one more thing I just realized I, I should pass on. And that's precisely how to align the fabric for sewing. I'm lining up, I'm setting up my two pieces now. And actually, if I'm following my pattern, I got it backwards. The top is going to be pointing left and the next one is going to be pointing right. So I'm going to clearly flip along this edge. So flip. And I'm going to make the two top points here line up as, as well as you can. Here, you can see, when I folded it over, these are the pointy bits. There are no, there's no dog ears here. These are the two points that line up perfectly. And then at the bottom here, you can see how well you sewed. I can see that this one triangle is just a little different than the other one, because you can see a little dog here, there, right there. That's good. And the other dog ear is actually, this is the top piece, is, has the upper part, and then the lower part has the, the notch. So that's what I will pin now and then sew, okay? <laughs> and also if you turn the sewing machine on. <laughs> I thought I'd done that already. Now the sewing machine's on, now I can sew. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> Uh, that's nice Alright. Here we go. I'm not going fast. Maybe I will build up speed later as I get going, but I want to make sure I get nice seams. Yeah. So that's the first pair. Now I'm going to grab the second pair, line them up. Okay, so there's two strips. I'll remove the pins. Now, uh, seams look nice and quarter inches look good. 
So now my methodology is how I'm trying to keep track is that the first of the two is on the bottom, the second of the two is on the top. I am going to show you a little trick of, that I learned from Carolyn for ironing these, this particular pattern and it's simply this. Many other types of patterns you always sew both flaps, you know, the uh, part that's on the outer edge of the fabric after you've sewed it. You sew that, you press, sorry, you press that flap to the dark side, you know, as in Star Wars, but you don't want to go to the dark side, right? In this particular pattern, particularly, hmm, because you're going to be aligning up six triangles for one point, they recommend you sew the flaps apart. In other words, um, when you sew the flap, you'll see, uh, you'll see here that they go each way, like an eagle, I suppose. <laughs> sorry, anyway, um, there's a trick to do that, and it's with this little piece of wood here that Carolyn acquired somewhere along the line. What you do is you lay the, the fabric over the top like this, and then you take your iron, and you open up the, you open up the, um, the seam, you open up the flaps, and then you just work along it. It naturally spreads the flaps in both directions. So that's pretty cool. So that's what I did. All right now, here comes phase two. So, I mean, you saw, you saw how I, uh, I've sewn the two pairs of triangles. Now the trick is to, how do you put them together? Same idea as before, but here you're gonna line up things just a little differently, because it won't look the same. So as you can see here, I'm gonna fold along the edge like that, and now you've got these two triangles ready to be sewed. What you're gonna do is line up the dog ears on each corner of the, of the triangles. What I've done is I've lined up You'll see that little ear fits with the dog ear there. Same idea here. This little dog ear here fits with the layer below. And my finger was covering it, but you get the idea. So nice even edge along the bottom here. Dog ears line up. That's how you pin it, and that's how you sew it. So let's do it. What I'm doing is pinning right through the thicker areas, try to maximize my stability. So now I'm looking at it. Yep, the, line, the edges line up on both sides. The dog ears line up, it's ready to sew. Okay, success! My first four uh, triangles sewn together. So I'm not going to keep doing the process, I'm going to do two and two and join, two and two and join. Okay, I'm going to have to unsew this one. Because um, I'm just looking what happened now, and for some reason, even though I pinned it, the bottom layer must have got caught up because it advanced more than the top layer and that the two points at the end here don't line up. I checked with my quilting consultant and I had a hunch what I was doing wrong and it proved that I was doing two things that I could have done better. And they both had to do with the way I was sewing, as I, might, as I suspected. First of all, I made me think, I wonder if I'm holding too tight on the fabric and pulling it away from the bottom. And I think that's true. Second thing is I wasn't pinning in the right spot in the sense that, and Caroline made sense, she said you should drive your pin through the quarter inch where the seam's gonna go, where the thread's gonna go, you put the pin in there. That way, if anything else shifts, it won't shift there. Oh, I have confirmed, I like the process of doing, of doing uh, two pairs and then putting them together because on the wall, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, it's still probably a little high up, but it keeps things nicely sequenced. Real quick, I'm gonna mention something else that I forgot to talk about before. As a result of the fabric, the way it's designed and, and colorized, if, if that's the right to term. For example, the dark green from Northcott is not all dark green, right? There's a bit of uh, texturing as far as color goes. And so when I cut the triangles, I just cut them all and put them in a package. Didn't pay attention, it didn't seem to care about what order the, those green cuts were in. Well, it matters when you're laying it out because what you don't want to do is have a sharp change from a darker dark green to a lighter dark green green, if you know what I mean. So it just took for me a little bit of changing, swapping some greens around so that it flowed better from dark to less than dark. Okay, I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm just getting ready to do a minor repair on the very first uh, row, and I've been attacked by my cat. I don't know if you can see him over top of the machine here. He just jumped up my lap and says, you need to pet me now. He's purring like crazy. So while, while I'm here, I guess the good news is I finished the entire first row. I've still got it in two pieces behind me. 
and I've, well, I've got actually one of them because the very first join of the two to plus two, I, have, I just want to redo it because that was before I had my course correction and I looked at it, I said, yeah, you know, I want to make it perfect. So, uh, so I'm going to fix it. And just as I was getting ready to do it, I suddenly had to pay attention to this guy. All right, this is now day two of this quilting adventure of sewing together the rows, well, the triangles. Uh, yesterday went reasonably well, but it was long, and I only finished, as you can see behind me, sort of, kind of, I finished two rows. Uh, I had to do a couple on sews. I just finished one uh, right away this morning before I, uh, I'm talking to you now. It's going to take a while. I, uh, I'm trying to be very particular about this. Maybe too particular? I don't know. We'll find out when we start joining rows. So we'll keep pressing on, as it were. I've been at this uh, sewing triangle thing for two straight days now, and I'm calling it the end of episode two. So it takes a lot longer than I thought it would. I, I'm done four strips ish, and so, hmm, so uh, I'm gonna wrap this up here today, and the next episode you'll actually see how it comes out. This one you get a taste for it because on the wall behind me here, I'll try to get in between the two patterns, you can see the boxes starting to develop and, and remember that that's uh this is the top half and the blue is the bottom half so with that i'm going to toast myself for having got this far and today i'm having a a Belveni 14 year old whiskey that is actually they call it their caribbean cask it's got a, it's made of rum casks amongst others and it, it is fabulous so uh, not peaty not smoky but an uh, incredibly warm rich flavor if you like whiskey, you have to go out and find this one. It's one of my favorites. A Balvenie Caribbean cask. Happy, happy sewing, happy quilting, and stick around for the next episode when you're going to see the top finished. I promise. I'm going to cut out all the sewing parts and you'll just see it build. All right? Cheers. Mmm. That really, <coughs> that's smooth. That really is a fine whiskey. Slime Java.